Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Drunk Knitter Podcast. I am your host, Sophia, and welcome, welcome, welcome to today's podcast. Happy Friday. Yay. It's Thursday when I'm filming this, but I wish it was Friday. But that does mean that today is Valentine's Day for me. Does anyone, did anyone, I guess I'm asking from the past to you in the future. So what did you do on Valentine's Day? Like, did you go out? Did you do anything? Did you binge watch something with your gal pals? Like, what did you do? Was it fun? Was it remarkable? My husband and I, we aren't doing jack crud tonight. Um, all we're going to do is buy some white wine, champagne, and a whole bunch of cheese, make a cheese plate, okay? And then binge watch Netflix while binge eating cheese and wine. And that's going to be our night. And honestly, we never get to do that anymore because we're old. So, like, we can't, like, binge eat stuff no more. So, it's going to be a lot of fun just to eat and watch Netflix and drink some wine. And it's going to be great. Um, that's it. That's all we're going to do. We're just literally go to bed early maybe and that's it. Signed, sealed, delivered. <laughs> oh, we're so boring. But you know what? It's fun. But anyway, um, I have a very special show. Wait a minute. I'm not wearing my glasses. What do you guys think? I'm blinder than a bat. I'm blinder than my bunny. She is so blind. <laughs> Poor baby. <laughs> I really cannot see very well, but I mean, I got to this this far of filming, so I mean, I guess I can see a little bit. Um, <laughs> I feel like I look so different without my glasses. I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, it's going to be a bunny day. So the people have spoken, and um, I, I am going to bring my bunny on the show. So for those of you who do not know, I have a fiber animal. Um, it's an Angora rabbit, and her name is Sansa, but we call her Bunny. Uh, and she is as sweet as can be, and she is the most mischievous pet in the house. As I, as I have said bazillions of times, y'all probably tired of me of saying this, but she is literally the little mastermind in the house. But she's the cutest, okay? Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to bring on the show just because a lot of you have been asking me about having a fiber animal at home. What's it like to have Angora? Um, do I spin her fiber? Yes, I do spin her fiber. I have my spinning mill right here just because my room is so small. A little shop sidekick, I love you. But I do spin, my fi spin her fiber on my sidekick. And I do spin it pure. I don't mix it with anything because I use it kind of like a, a, a single ply what's that mohair so I use it and then I will double it with another strand most likely like a a merino or something and so that way it gives the overall product like a beautiful like cloud like poof look that mohair tends to give so that's just what I that's how I like to use it I do not like to use it 100% by itself. It's just way too hot, okay? It's way too hot. Like, it has to be a blizzard for me to, like, I have to be walking to the blizzard for me to wear, like, a straight-up Angora, like, sweater, and that's all I would need to survive out there. Like, it's, it's like one of the warmest fibers on earth. So, they are really, really interesting little critters, and they do produce quite a bit of wool, and I'm going to show you that in a little bit. But first, I just want to show you that a wonderful fellow Hoosier named Kathleen has sent me um, these bags from her Etsy store called Bags Maker, eh, Bag Maker Kathleen. I did it. And uh, she sent me some bags to review, and she also sent me one to give away to y'all. So let's look at it. You ready? You ready? You ready? Okay. So first, I'm going to close this book because no more notes. Bam! I hate notes. Ugh, I hate it. I just like to just go. So she sent me these beautiful bags. I actually picked them out. One for me, one for you. And I'm going to start with the one that I picked out for myself. Unfortunately, I have pets. So yes, there is pet hair on mine. There might be some on yours. I am so sorry. I, I try. I try. You know, right before I started filming, like her bags are so, so pretty. Look at that. But right before I started filming, you see these gorgeous little like pom-poms. Puppy was nosing my pom-pom up. And I'm like, Puppy, stop! <laughs> stop it, that's not for you. <laughs> have to give it away. I can't get animal stuff on it. So, <laughs> anyway, I want the bag review. Hello, I'm a mess. So, here is the bag. Um, I picked out this one because I really love the pattern that she sewed from. 
Um, first things first, you guys notice that it has a flat bottom. This is a must have for me with knitting bags is a flat bottom because I like to use it, like set them up straight like this, pop out that bottom with all your stuff inside there. Um, it will stand up pretty well and you can knit straight from it and it just makes it easier to knit from the bag. Um, I struggle with drawstring bags a lot, like the basic ones that don't have the flat bottom. So I really appreciate that. Um, another thing that I really love about this bag, and yes, I do really love it. I'm not just saying that. Um, I One thing I really love is the fabric that she chose. So when buying bags on Etsy, I'm always a little scared about what fabric is being used. A lot of times it's just quilting fabric, which is fine, you know. A lot of people like that. Uh, that thinner fabric because then they could put it into their purse and backpacks and carry-ons, what have you. Um, I'm a bigger fan of like sturdier fabrics, canvas fabrics, maybe something a little thinner than canvas. This is definitely heavier than your typical quilting fabric. Um, it is definitely like a higher quality, uh, you, you call this twill? I don't know what to call this fabric. It's heavier than quilting, but it's it's lighter than canvas. It's somewhere in between, which I find it perfect because it, it can be used as an outside bag, like a bag you can just use, like throw all your stuff in and go, or it's still moldable enough where you can stuff it in your purse and go. And that's what I really, really liked about it. Um, of course, the cactuses are cute, or cacti are cute. I'm going to Arizona, and I love me some cacti. It reminds me of my grandfather, who I am going to go visit there. The little pom-poms on the end is totes of the warbs. Um, and, but I think the shining moment of the bag is the lining. Again, it's something I look for in my knitting bags. Oh, I just jacked it up. I just made it look really bad. Hold on. QVC, hire me. <laughs> I love the lining. You can kind of see, um, how the light is shining off of this. This is a very shiny lining. So what that does is that your knits won't pill when you, when it's like, moving rumbling around the bag and as you're knitting from it your knits won't pill and sometimes with certain like cloths like grabby cloths they can pill if they keep rubbing against it so i really love that mindfulness so this is the larger bag and then for y'all i picked out this size which i think is like the standard size so i find i love this bag oh. First of all, I love the colors. It's very gender neutral. Um, I love that it's of, uh, it looks like knit stitches. It, it sounds like, because I left your tissue in there. You're welcome. <laughs> and I love how the pom-poms are slightly different, but still matchy and they're so soft. It's the same thing, same bag. It still has a very, very shiny, heavy duty fabric on the inside. This is definitely very durable. Um, it's sewn very well. I absolutely love it. I honestly, truly, this is one of my favorite knitting bags so far uh, that I have used just because I really love the aesthetic of it. I love how different it is. Like, it's just different enough, you know? I mean, and look at that pom-pom. Oh, it's so cute. That's so cute. <laughs> so, yeah. I am definitely going to take my bag on vacation with me. I already have a project plan to go in here. Actually, that's a lie. I'm str I'm struggling between two projects to bring, but it's just two. That sweater project, which would mean I can't share with you my progress just yet, because it's a surprise. Or I could bring my other project, which as far as I know, I can share with you. So, yay. So, we'll see what I would end up bringing on the trip. So, if you would like to win this bag... <laughs> I love this. I, I want to keep it for myself. I really do, but I'm going to have to give it away. Oh. If you would like to win this bag, all you have to do is be a subscriber to me on YouTube and on Instagram. And you just got to leave a comment at the end, at the bottom. Leave a comment underneath this video. Just leave a comment and you'll just be automatically entered. And because I am going away, this is going to be a really, really fast giveaway. So you got to act fast, y'all. Like, I'm not just saying that. Like, I am, I am leaving on a jet plane very soon. So I want to send out so y'all can enjoy it. Oh, it's so beautiful. So, um, 
giveaways will end on Wednesday, next Wednesday, okay? I'm gonna put the date because I have no idea what date that is. Next Wednesday, okay? I will reveal the winner on that following Friday's podcast, okay? All right? So, again, to enter, just leave a comment, be a subscriber, and be a subscriber on Instagram as well. In the meantime, I'm gonna try to keep the pets away from your prize, I am so sorry. And she, oh, she also gave me alpaca. I have my speaker. Why? She also gave me a huge thing of alpaca. Just sending some alpaca love. Just, just so nice. Oh my gosh. It's just so generous. <laughs> you guys never have to send me stuff. Like, look at that. It's stunning. It's stunning. Look, it's from you. Actually, that's a llama. <laughs> so stunning. <sighs> I love up spinning with alpaca. It is so soft. It's so warm. It's so cushy. It's warmer than wool. Did you know that? Alpaca is warmer than wool. I love alpacas. Oh, oh it's on me. Bunny's going to be jealous. <laughs> but anyway, she sent me that alpaca and then she packaged everything beautifully. And then when I opened it, I messed everything up and I stacked everything on the alpaca. And now there's free alpaca unspun fibers on here when you got your bag. That's just, that was a total me fail. I'm sorry, Kathleen. You packed it so beautifully and I jacked it up. But anyway, on with the bunny segment. All right, so here's Bunny. Hey, Bunny. She didn't want to come out. You know why? Because remember I told you she doesn't like her feet being touched. I cut her nails and she didn't want to talk to me today. You didn't want to talk to mommy. Can you tell this is a bunny? I mean, on camera, like from this angle, which I look terrible at, but she looks beautiful in. Um, to me, she looks like a little, literally a little poof ball. So bunny, the good people want to know what I do to take care of you every day. So Angora bunnies are a very high maintenance pet. Um, we've got her care down to the point where it's routine, but getting it there was very hard because she is a bit of an exotic pet. Uh, first hard thing was making sure keeping her feet clean. It's all about the feet. And uh, when we first got her, she was not litter trained. Um, she is not, she would just pee wherever. And um, in the bunny world right now, there's like this big thing with having graded bottoms for bunny uh, cages, which means that your bottom is like a grid, like a metal grid. Um, a lot of bunnies, it hurts their little feet because they don't have a lot of floof there. So like sitting on that all day hurts their feet. So a lot of stores stop selling that type of bottom. However, Angoras are not short of floof. She digging. She likes to dig to get comfy. Hey, baby. Um, she is not short fluke. So she can stand on those like grates and it doesn't hurt her at all. Uh, but it was very hard to find one that was good quality um, and comfortable in general, like made for bunnies. And so like that was so hard. That was the first thing, keeping her feet clean. So that way when she peed, it went through the grates and onto bedding. Um, we cannot have bedding in her crate. Like most bunnies have bedding. Um, for those who don't know, bedding is like little like wood chips or just little like paper uh, pieces that you put in a cage. That way your bunny can do their business and it doesn't get everywhere and you just scoop out the dirty bedding and put in new bedding um, every so often. That would stick to her like glue, okay? We tried bedding one time because people were saying they were able to do it with their Angora. Yeah. No, she was in that bedding for a total of 15 minutes and I was combing that stuff out for like a week, okay? Like a week will pass and I'll find one just like in her butt. So um, bedding is a no-no for her. So I had to do the great method. So that way the bedding will not touch her and she'll stay nice and clean. Um, and that went really well. So we do have that. That's her outdoor home. She, We put her in there. Not outdoor. That's her garage house. We put her in there when conditions in the house. It's just either too hot. Um, so if we have like the heat blasting or what have you, which we rarely do nowadays, um, she'll go out into a nice cool place. However, her favorite house, Bunny has one favorite house. Hey, baby. Can I adjust you? Bunny has one 
favorite house. Oh, okay. You don't want to be held like that. Okay. I understand, baby. Shh. Okay. She has one favorite house, and that is her green, like, little hutch that you see in videos and what have you. Um, it has a basic bottom. It's just a flat bottom. There's no grates. And she loves this house just because it's big enough where she can move around in but it's a little more compact than her other one so she but so it's so it's able to fit in the living room and she just loves being the center of attention she loves um like being in the living room and hearing all the things and interacting with the other pets it's something that she really 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 enjoys to do believe it or not uh, bunnies are very social um she didn't come to us that social she was very shy but she came to us, she decided to be a little social butterfly after a year of having her. And so she really enjoys being in the living room. However, with that bottom, having a flat bottom, we do clean her cage very often. Um, and she is potty trained. Yes, bunnies can be potty trained. Can you believe that? Um, she isn't fixed. Um, I'm thinking about getting her fixed. I was going to breed them, but then um, I, don't, I don't think my husband's ready for that. I kind of want to move it down because she doesn't want to sit up. There we go. It's an awkward angle, but you can see her better. Um, so, yes, yeah, she is potty trained, and she absolutely loves to be, uh, she loves to go in her potty. Um, her potty has to be a certain way. It has to be in the same spot relative to the room. You can move it around in her cage, but it has to be in the same corner of the room. That's how she can tell where she's going to go potty. So yes, they have spatial relations knowledge like kids do. It's just to me, like we had no idea that she was that like able to figure that out. Sorry if I'm playing with the camera a lot. It's just, let me see if I can get you. There we go. There we go. You're up high and you like it? Yeah. Um, so she does go potty in there, and that helps keep her feet clean. Now, as you may have noticed, she is a big bunny. So she cannot use regular bunny litter boxes. We actually have to use a kitten litter box. The only problem with that is that there's no, like, grates on the top, so that way her stuff can filter through to the bedding underneath. And without that grate, her feet can, in theory, get dirty. Now her feet are fairly good, pretty, pretty, very good, clean, almost pristine. And the reason with that is that we change that litter constantly, constantly. And yeah, she used kitty litter, but not regular kitty litter. She uses like paper litter. It's literally little recycled newspaper litter. Um, I think the brand name is Yesterday's News, but I get like the PetSmart version or like the Petco version or Pet Value or... Every store has their own version of it. I just buy their version. Look at all the flu flowing in the wind. Can y'all see this? If I have this in like 4K, which I cannot just because it'll like mess up my internet forever. But <clears throat> there's like flu flying everywhere. That's like $5 a hair right there. <laughs> oh, I got one in my eye. Okay, this is nice. So she uses kitty litter. She goes potty in the litter box. Um... And all that took about, like, a year for, for her to get used to. Like, the litter box, she had to be litter trained, which she did by herself. She figured it out. Um, and um, she is very particular about where her litter box is. And, and um, she is also very spoiled because she has another house so she has three houses a cool house in the garage the center of attention house inside our house and then she has a condo outside of our house it's like a little rabbit hutch and it's two-story it's very cute it's very it looks like a little like townhouse like new construction townhouse and she goes there when the weather is perfect um, unfortunately, it's been too hard to put her outside lately because it's been so wet and rainy and snowy. They really cannot be around too much moisture. Um, it's not good for their fur and it's not good for them. It can make them super duper cold if their fur gets wet. That's their main defense of staying warm. And then the bunny could be, uh, really too cold. So it has to be dry and it has to be cool for her to be outside. So generally that's in the fall is her heyday. 
Um, and then spring when it's not too rainy, that's when she's outside. And she absolutely loves her condo. I think that's her favorite. She does get lonely though in there because it's outside and we're inside. So she, whenever we bring her back inside, um, she's really excited for pets. <laughs> like she just wants everyone to hold her. She's like, hold me. I was outside and so lonely. Look at that little cute face. Look at that little cute face. And you can see she's so floofy. She is in full floof, y'all. Like, it's flying in the wind. I had the floof there two days ago, and uh, she wasn't quite ready to be plucked, so I didn't really pluck her. She has to be ready, as I said before. Like, you can only pluck them certain times. Now, unfortunately, she got to get that time starting now because we're going on vacay, and she loves to shed her floof the day before we fly out or go anywhere. She did it each Thanksgiving. She did it the last time we went to Arizona. If you do it this time, Bunny, that's it. That's it. Uh, when we go out and we travel, we cannot leave her at home too long by herself. Just because bunnies are very high, I mean, Angoras and themselves are very high maintenance. They have to be combed and groomed on the regular, almost daily. Everyone says daily. I do not do her daily because then I, we, we will both lose our mind, okay? Um, she does get almost daily playtime. They have to get a lot of playtime. But I groom her just multiple times a week. Like, I don't even count. Like, it's not even like, oh, it's Tuesday. It's time to groom Bunny because that would never work out. I just literally take her out and I we hang out. We groom her. I let her go run free and that's her routine. Um, and I do that quite often like almost daily, but not quite sometimes. After this podcast, she's definitely going to get a grooming because, I mean, look. Like, floof just comes off of her. Look at that. Too bad it's focusing on my face. Here, Bunny, you can have that back. No, I'm just kidding. So what does she eat? She is the pickiest little you-know-what in... Are you digging? Are you digging? <laughs> she is the pickiest little thing in the world. She has her kibble, which we call kibble. It's just feed. We just feed her rabbit feed for specifically for angoras or just like design for like show rabbits with long hairs. Um, that was hard to find, okay? That was my stomach, by the way. That was hard to find. I looked high and low for that food. I finally found that tractor set. Certain tractor supplies have them on the cheap. And honestly, we get her a 50 pound bag and it lasts almost a year. It is phenomenal. And it's like 20 bucks, not even. Um, she also eats her pretty much all that she can eat all day is hay. She eats as much as she likes. It's like a full hay buffet. And she is a hay snob. So hay is just like dry like orchard grass or dry free grass. She eats a certain grass called Timothy hay. Um, but she likes it. She likes first cut Timothy hay. So what that means is that she only likes it when like when the grass grows and you got those beautiful like seed pods on the grass and you cut it and then you you dry it out for hay. That's the one that she likes. She doesn't like when they go back and cut it again. She loves all those like seed heads. I guess they're extra crunchy. So she likes first cut Timothy hay. Um, I ha I get the oxbow bag. It's like really big. It's not cheap, bunny. Bunny. Uh, you will spend more money in hay than when you wish you would. And I live in a farming community. So I could in theory get hay from my neighbors. It's just that she requires Timothy hay, which is very specific type of grass. And a lot of times when you just have a field, if you're not like, growing specifically timothy hay you got a lot of stuff mixed in there i just want to know what exactly i'm feeding her uh, just because she is a show rabbit she needs that high fiber content in hay so that way when she eats her fur when she licks herself and eats her fur she's able to process that um that's the whole point of like the hay it really helps them process because bunnies cannot throw up so everything has to be processed back end okay so like they need all the fiber ever talking about fiber she gets a lot of fresh greens um she can't handle on a day her belly's a little sensitive this this the fresh greens she gets it um like every so often and um like you're technically supposed to give bunnies greens every single day she this little chick will have diarrhea 
<laughs> and no, and then it sticks to her floop, and then she's mad because like my husband has to hold her and have to cut like the diarrhea from her fur. It's just like no, okay, no. Um, but she does get cilantro every so often. She gets fresh cilantro, organic cilantro from the garden. Sometimes we grow it in our windowsill. We get it from all these. She loves cilantro. She'll pass up everything. Okay, she will starve if you don't give her cilantro. So that's her favorite because it has a very strong smell. She loves things with a strong smell. She also loves carrot sticks. Now, carrots are very sweet, high of high sugar content. So she cannot have, look at that face. Look at that face. Look at that face. That is the face of someone so cute. I'm trying to show you her other eye, but you really, it's just in there. Look at her little nose. <laughs> All the pets are probably jealous. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know what I was talking about. I'm sorry. She, she's too cute. I forgot. I'm sorry. I hope it wasn't important. But, um, so with all that in mind, you got to brush them. You got to give them fresh um, greens. If their bellies can handle it, her belly struggles. Um, you have to give them the right amount of feed to hay ratio. They have to have access to water, a salt lick, a mineral lick. Um, she has a special litter, special litter box three special crates that have different uses for different temperatures because you got to keep them at the right temperature because look how floofy this chick is okay look at that floof look at that floof like she needs to be kept cool at all times that's why we like her in the living room because it's a wide open space and what that does is that a lot of air circulates because we have an open floor concept in the garage, it's very temperature controlled as well. It doesn't get too cold neither or too hot in the garage. Um, and if it's way too hot, don't worry. She has not one, but two diva fans. Yes, she gets a fan when it's too hot. She does get her little diva fan. And literally, it's just an electric fan. And we face it towards her. And she'll just, like, plop out in front of it all, like, happy. Like, yes. Yes. <laughs> and her hair is just like blowing in the wind. I recommend having Angoras. Yes, I do. They are a pleasure to have. They are such sweeties. They they are pets. A lot of people just don't, um, a lot of breeders that don't like treat them like pets. They are pets. They are very loving animals. They know exactly who you are. She greets me every morning. Um, she knows my husband. She perks up whenever we come to her crate. Um, except when you have to pull her out and cut her toenails, then she gets mad. But they are honestly sweet little pets. You just have to know that they're very high maintenance. And they're an animal that you really have to earn their trust. The fact that she lets me hold her and handle her, and the fact that she lets me groom her and comb her and pluck her, and even though she doesn't like me cutting her nails, she still lets me do it. Um, that all gathers, that all is like a lot of trust. Um, it took us a while to get there. When I first had her, she let me comb her and that was it. She, cause she was okay with that being an Angora. She's used to it. But um, it took us a while to get there where she trusted me to touch her feet, where she trusted me to pick her up whenever. Like it's honestly, it's not like a cat and a dog where you're like human, yay. Like she's, she's still very feral, you know? So when you have this bond with an animal like this, it makes it a little more special because they are giving up something that's really important to them. Um, they're like thinking, oh man, like this big thing can eat me, but I know she's not because she gives me all the carrots I can tolerate. Yay. <laughs> so yeah. So just remember that bunnies may not show their affection at first. You kind of have to earn it. You know, you have to give them that trust when they pull back, respect that, you know, um, just always, 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 um, when I handle her, I'm just, I kind of treat her like one of my like preschool kids like just like oh it's okay bunny I'm just gonna flip you over I always tell her what I'm gonna do to her even though she can't understand um I think that calms her down because she can hear me and she knows it's me um and when you start feeding her and stuff like she'll know you like she knows my mother-in-law because when we go on vacation we can't leave her away oh for too long um I leave her with my mother-in-law and she perks up whenever she sees her now because she 
she has given my mother-in-law that trust too. And she loves my mom too. My mom spoils her. When Grandma Carol comes into town, okay, from New Jersey, she gets ice water. She get her hay changed a lot. Like, she don't let the hay sit. She gets double the food. I tell her no because, like, she can't eat double the food because, hello, fiber to food ratio is crucial. Like, my mom just pets her, visits her, makes sure her diva fan's okay. If she has her diva fan on, like, my mom spoils the bejesus out of her. <laughs> So yeah, I recommend everyone at least learn more about them, give it a try. Um, I absolutely love having Bunny in the house. And if she wasn't so much work, I would have two. I really would. The best way to have two is to get like a bonded pair. Like get one, kind of like how kitty cats can be a bonded pair. Get one that's like a bond, that's bonded to another bunny. That's a great way. Anyway, um, before I end this, don't forget I do have a giveaway. And if you have a bunny at home, I want to see pictures. I want to see pictures. I want to put it in the podcast. So send me your pictures of your bunny. Hey, it's Sophia from the future again. Apparently, I cannot plan ahead. Um, please send me your bunny pictures just by using this hashtag. And then I will add you to the bunny montage. Awesome. Back to the video. Oh, ooh, I didn't have my coffee. You want some coffee, baby? You can't have coffee. Haha, <laughs> you're a bunny. Ah, oh, there's bunny hair all over my mug. Gross. My entire life is pet. Uh, My entire life is like bunny hair, cat hair, and dog hair. Like, oh, that's so embarrassing. Okay, you ready, bunny? Ready to say goodbye? Ready to say goodbye to good people? Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, she's not ready. Oh, okay, you want to do like that? All right, thank you for watching the podcast. Bunny says bye, bye. <laughs> All right, I didn't clean my face yet. I'm sorry, but bunny is a song purist, and I just wanted to show this to y'all. You ready? Like, no response. Ready? But okay, this is her song. Okay. Good morning, good morning. It's great to stay up late. Good morning, good morning to you. Good. Okay, maybe she just doesn't care today. Oh, Bonnie, you little stinker.